Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. We are so glad you decided to join us this morning. We pray that you will be blessed by the service this morning. Today's verse is Philippians 4, um, verse 4 through 9. It says, this is the Passion Translation. It says, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let joy overflow, for you are united with the anointed one. Let gentleness be seen in every relationship, for our Lord is ever near. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Listen, saints, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. Follow the example of all that we have imparted to you and the God of peace will be with you in all things. Let us worship today. Good morning and welcome to the living word. We are so happy you've joined us and we are going to recite our worshipers faith confession. If you know it, say it along with me. It says, Father, we thank you in response to your goodness. We praise your name because you have given us life and that more abundantly. With our dance, we celebrate you. With our song, we adore you. With a shout, we proclaim that you reign. There is no situation, there is no foe, and there is no enemy that can prevent our praise nor silence our worship. We worship you in spirit. We worship you in truth. We are true worshipers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord, saints. I'm Rodney Beard, senior pastor of the Living Word Community Church. We're located at 2304, where I pastor, along with my lovely wife, Pastor Stephanie Beard. Look up online, buy a book, buy her book, and I don't know what she really does, but do it. <laughs> Heavenly Father, in the blessed name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we're humble before you today as we go through the most traumatic time that we can remember since the 50s. And Lord, we know you're with us. We know you're going to deliver us because we know how much you love us. So sit with us now and be our holy guest is all that we do and say may become divine in your holy presence. In Jesus' name. I uh, ask you to turn your attention now to the book of Isaiah. I want to find one other, too. Look at that old Torah Bible. I'm going to keep that page, though. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60. Verse 1 and 2. Don't you love hearing those pages flip? I'm going to have to use that too for time's sake. Look at Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2, and then yeah, we'll go to chapter 10, verse 27. What we saw this week is appalling. There was an assault, an attack, and an insurrection, a coup, on our democracy. And it was instigated, insinuated, and commanded by the commander-in-chief. I'm not going to even call his name. You know who he is. Five people died. Now, you can say what you want to about those halls, but whether you see it, feel it or not, they are the icon of the freedom this country has. The freedom this country has. Many great things have occurred there. And I've never been in there. I don't even like a lot of what, what goes on there. But I was shocked. It takes a lot to shock me. For four years, we've been dealing with sedition. For four years, we watched this insurrection as those people stormed that building and did what they did. Oh, my goodness. And it's shocking. All this week, we haven't talked that much about coronavirus as we have that. <clears throat> 4,111 people died the other day. That's more than 9-11. And I'm going to say this. The act that we witnessed ourselves this week was domestic terrorists. It wasn't the Mexicans, like he would have said. It wasn't the Muslims, it wasn't the black, it wasn't Black Lives Matter. It was internal, homegrown terrorists. And so you got to ask yourself this question, when will this all end? When will we be delivered from all of the week? We're not going to even talk about Iran you know, developing nuclear weapons. We're not going to talk about North Korea. We're not going to, I don't know how we can't talk about Russia, but we're not going to even talk about that. We're going to talk about us. Because Jesus gave us all power, all the power he had. So when will it all end? you got to be asking yourself. But if you look at Isaiah 60, Verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. 
For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth <laughs> and gross darkness the people and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee you the Lord is going to arise upon you and his glory <laughs> will be seen upon thee. Chapter 10, verse 27, Isaiah. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Jesus was given the anointing by the Holy Spirit without measure. He had the power of God, the power of God, and he has the capacity to break every satanic enslavement, yoke, bondage, Covenant and chain. And that same anointing is working in you right now. We have the power. We have the power working in us because of our relationship with the Lord. God is in the business of destroying yokes. God is in the business of breaking change. God is in the business of freeing his people. And it doesn't matter if it's spiritual or physical. God can break all chains. I mean, in the Bible was written for our example and enlightenment. He broke chains for so many people. You know it. Do you really believe it? See? You know, remember Paul and Silas in that prison? That wasn't a change. That was a prison door. And he didn't just deliver himself and Silas. Everybody in that prison, their doors were open and they were set free. I believe that for our church. I believe that for this country. I believe it. So here, here are several things I want to bring up briefly. I want to tell you what satanic chaos is. I want to tell you what satanic chains are. And I want to tell you what those chains look like. See? You know, what, you know what a chain is? You know what a chain is. It's metal joined together or <coughs> braided. It's metal. I don't know of a man that can break chains, but I know of a Savior who can today. And the chains of this nation must be broken by God. You know, a lot of those people were out there the other day. Some of them had Holy Bible on their church. Some of them were walking in with their Bible. But there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the path thereof leadeth to destruction, which is what we witnessed Wednesday. Wednesday. Chains exist in the spirit realm. The devil the devil, they are, they, are, they are exemplary of darkness, wickedness, destruction, and what the devil wants to do to you and our society is bound us to himself. Amen. I mean, this, he has no compulsion or pause when he can run freely throughout the earth. 
I mean, his weapons, his weapons are used to tie God's kingdom up, to confuse God's kingdom, to subvert the word of God. You know that. I don't have to tell you that. I do not have to tell you that. But let me tell you this. You know this. No weapon formed against the people of God will prosper. Isaiah 54, verse 17. And the weapons of our warfare aren't like his. His are carnal. Ours are mighty through God to pull down this established nature in the world. You know, chain afflictions, coronavirus, we've never seen anything like it. Sickness and disease. And it hinders all the things that we have to deal with. Oh, man, the devil is busy, like they used to say. The devil is oppressing us as a country, as individuals, with this continuous affliction. When will the church pray? When will the church trust God? When are we going to get woke? Okay, I, I might seem a little different, but that affected me, and I wasn't even there. The devil wants to place limitations on us. He wants us to feel like we have no other recourse. But to believe what we see, do not believe what you see. God is in control. I'm going to say it. He wants to limit us. But so many of us have been blinded by the God of this age, according to Paul. I'm going to say it. All these evangelical preachers who supported the guy in the White House, Franklin Graham, William Jeffries, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr., and all these others, enable this man to be able to accomplish what he accomplished when our efforts should have been placed on defeating the devil and not feeding the devil's ego, amen, see, see. I mean, anything the devil wants to do with you, believe me, is evil, evil. And it's meant to limit God in our lives. What, what, what are we going to do? I don't want to go back to 2 Corinthians 7, 14. Everybody's using, but if we, would do what the word says. The devil wants to detain this entire nation to his will. So many people, you saw all of them in there the other day. They work for the devil. They, they're not for the government. They're not even for the guy in the White House. They have been hoodwinked and bamboozled into thinking the devil's thoughts. The devil's thoughts. Make no mistake about it, saints. You know, we, you know, everybody says we're on the verge of collapse. I say no. We are on the verge of escalation of the Spirit of God if his people would do their part. You know, we say, you know, I gave this uh, example the other night in Bible study. 
You know, I don't know, you may have seen the commercial Liberty Insurance. And the guy is Doug and Limu Emu. And Doug drew the instruction to win that game. And he looks over and he says, Limu, Limu, did you get it? And Limu's head was buried in the sand. <laughs> That's all. God has given us instruction. He even told us, I know the plan I got. This ain't it. You ought to be prospering and growing. That's my plan for my people who are called by my name. The devil wants you tied down. The devil wants you limited. The devil wants us in bondage. Here's an example. How many tens of millions of Americans are suffering right now? It's as if the devil got us where he wants us. No job, no food, begging, getting handouts, and no continuity of government. Yeah, yeah. You won't even be able to attain your destiny as long as we allow the devil to run it. Satan, Beelzebub, because he wants you stagnant. He wants you out of the picture. You can pray all you want, but if it's not sincere, you may as well keep it. You know, we get so content with our situation. I'm happy. Like Mr. John and Miss Mary, Mr. John prayed, Lord bless me, your servant, Miss Mary, little John, and little Mary. Us for no more, amen. That's how America has become. Even the church. Your great efforts have been stagnated. Your love has been stagnated. Your life for many people is stagnated. You can't even go where you want to go. Do what you want to do because you are in bondage, see? And we're all suffering, all of us. Whether we're going through the aforementioned or not, it's affecting us all. What, are, what is the church going to do? Where are the preachers at? Where is the word? Amos said there's going to come a time when people are going to be looking for the word and can't find it. Going to and fro, looking for the word. But it ain't there. Come on, saints. He wants to keep us in this coronavirus affliction. He wants to kill as many of the saints as he possibly can. But he will not succeed. Infirmity, disability. The other virus that has taken over this country is hate. We saw that on Wednesday. Hate, just hate. Ignorance and a lack of wisdom. That's what we saw. He wants to bind us in obscurity. He doesn't want you to know the truth. When the Lord says the truth is what's going to make us free. What drives these chains? Curses. I don't believe that America is cursed. I believe there's a curse in America. You know why I don't believe this country is cursed? Because you and me are here. My question for you is, what are you going to do? I'm not inciting you to go out and riot. But do what you can. You can send an email to your senator or congressman. There's something you can do. 
You know, we all love to say, well, I'm praying. Well, it's sometime. We got to get up off our knees and roll up our sleeves and get busy with God's agenda. We've broken covenant with God. You know it, I know it, we all know it. In all areas. And, 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 and a lot of us are functioning under a satanic covenant, not a godly one. And we've entered into it, many of us, personally. Personally. On our own behalf whether it was consciously or unconsciously. We've done it. We've done it. We need to change our behavior, our actions, and our speech. And that doesn't mean to go out there with a whole bunch of religious platitude. Time's up for that. We all need to take action. We, 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 we've been plagued with enchantments and, 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 and div divination. That's why we're in chains. That's why we're in bondage. We've listened to everybody but Jesus. And I'm going to say Jesus. All them fake phonies out there saying all that stuff for the money. Where is Paula White? Where is she? Where are these evangelicals now? Well, they, they can't show them their face because they help the cause. And now we're on a faulty foundation, but Jesus can save us from that. Jesus. Jesus. We've submitted to evil summons to do the devil's bidding. We've been attacked by satanic dreams. We dream it, and then we do it. <laughs> All right. You can be attacked in your dreams. The devil can talk to you in your dreams. See? He enjoys the victory he has right now in the United States of America no matter how we feel about it. No matter what we think about this country, we have problems, and it affects all of us. You're not hungry yet, but what if you were? You're not homeless yet, but what if you were? First thing we do is run to God. Well, I'm going to say to you now, run to God now. Not just for you, but for your loved ones and everybody around you, your neighbors. Let's all run to God. And those chains will be broken. I guarantee you, come together right now over him, the Lord. Amen. I'm Rodney Beard. Senior Pastor of the Living Word Community Church, and we welcome you. You know, if you don't do nothing else, hear what I told you today, because it's true. It's not even prophetic. It's written. It is written. God bless you. <laughs> Somebody told me I need to smile more, so God bless you and God keep you, and we love you and can't wait to see you. Amen and amen. Thank you.
Thank you.